Hey everyone, uh, we're going to give this a shot. Um, this is a new adventure. I am recording a video with everyone in the classroom. Say hi everyone. Hi. There it is. And now they're going to be silent for the rest of the video. All right, right? No, yeah. you are. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Ian. Okay, so this is for, uh, a video that goes along with 4.2. It's the green worksheet that you guys have. And uh, a lot of the stuff on the front side is what we covered in the other video. Um, but the back side has some good examples, so I want to make sure that we did them. So uh, if you want to fast forward to the part on the back side, you can do that. So first of all here, we have a picture of, it looks like a cubic polynomial. And we have a secant line from this point to this point, from A to B. We have a continuous function. And it looks like we have a tangent line that is parallel to our secant line. So uh, first I want us to find the slope of the secant line. So the important thing here is that this maps to f of A. And this guy right here maps to f of B. There we go. So to find the slope of the line, change in y over change in x, that'll be f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And if you had looked down a few inches on your page, you see that that's written right down here as well. Picture also shows this tangent line right here, which is parallel to it. And that means that f prime of c, where c is in between a and b here, is equal to the slope of the secant line. So this is kind of what mean value theorem says, is there is some c value in between a and b where the slope of the tangent line at c is equal to the slope of the secant line between a and b. So, what we're going to think about now is, does this always happen? Is that true for any f of x? Well, let's try it with this one. So, we've got two points here. This is uh, x equals 1. This is x equals 3. And it looks like if we draw on that secant line right there, this is 3, 4. This point right here is 1, 0. And first thing it asks us to do is calculate the slope of the secant line. So, that would be 4 minus 0, which is 4, over 3 minus 1, which is 2. So, it looks like the slope of that line is 2. So there seems to be an x-coordinate somewhere between 1 and 3 where uh, the slope of the tangent line is the same as that. So if we use like our, if you imagine our like a ruler and you just slid it down so it was parallel, looks like it would attach like right about there, something like that. So just beyond 2, somewhere between 2 and 3, like 2 and a quarter maybe, something like that. So uh, we eyeballed that, so we said it's about 2.25 maybe, approximately. So now we're going to find f prime of x. We have our equation for f of x down here. It's x cubed minus 3x squared plus x plus 1. So the derivative, 3x squared minus 6x and plus 1. And so now they say set f prime of c equal to the slope of the secant line. So we're going to try to find the c value here that gives us that same slope of the tangent. So f prime of c would be uh, 3c squared minus 6c plus 1. And we're going to try to find when that is equal to 2. So now they say that we're going to have to use quadratic formula or a grapher to be able to solve this. So you could set, you could graph both of these sides on your calculator and see where they intersect. I guess I'll use quadratic formula since I'm right here and I don't have my grapher handy. So I have 3c squared minus 6c minus 1 equals 0. So quadratic formula, uh, c would be equal to negative b, which is 6, plus or minus square root of b squared, that's 36, minus 4ac, but 4ac is negative 12, so it'll be plus 12, all divided by 2a, which is 6. So now, if we think about this, looks like the, this gives us two solutions, right? Because that would also happen over here. I only want the one over here, so I don't think the minus is going to help me out. Let's see if I can erase just the minus. Uh, oh, nope. We'll draw in the parts that are missing. So I think I just want the addition because that's going to give me the positive value over here. So that'll be 6 plus the square root of 48 divided by 6. So square root of 48, I can pull a 4 out of that. Can I do better? I think I can pull out a 16 out of 48. That's 16 times 3. So I'll have 6 plus, so if I pull a 16 out, that's 4 times the square root of 3 over 6. And if I grab my calculator and do 4 plus the square root, I'll just do square root of 48, and divide by 6. That gives me a value of, uh, oh, did that wrong, 6 plus the square root of 48, and then divide by 6 gives me 2.15. I wasn't too far off, okay? So I did pretty well, 2.25, 2.15, not too far off. All right, so now, here we're going to do the secant again between those two points. Now this time, if I had my rolling ruler, where would that touch? Well. It's like there, but that's not really the tangent line, right? Because we have a corner. So the trouble here is that we have a corner of the graph. So what's different about the function? Well, it's not differentiable. It's not differentiable on uh, 1, 2. Okay, So that must mean that there's something different, right? Up here, we just kind of have a nice curvy, swervy graph. It's nice and smooth. But down here, it doesn't work out quite as well. So let's see. 
Here's our mean value theorem. If f is continuous on AB and differentiable on open AB, then there exists at least one point C on open AB, so that f prime of C is equal to the slope of the secant line. So something in between A and B where the slopes are the same. All right, so uh, if you're just joining us for the examples now, I'm going to run through these. Uh, the first one is one we actually did on um, the video for 4.2a uh, when I did the mean value theorem. Uh, but we're going to try it again. Why not? So first thing we're going to do is say uh, find the value of c that satisfies conclusion or state why it doesn't apply. So all polynomials are smooth, remember, so we know it's going to work. So we have first f prime of x f prime of x will be 2x plus 3. And we also have to find the slope of the secant line. So the slope of the secant line is going to be f of 0 minus f of negative 4 divided by 0 uh, minus negative 4. So f of 0 is 5. f of negative 4, that gives me positive 16. Uh, minus 12 is 4 plus 5 is 9 over 4. So that gives me 5 minus 9 is negative 4 over 4. That's negative 1. So I want this to be equal to negative 1. Subtract 3 from both sides. 2x is negative 4. x is going to be negative 2. Now notice I did it with an x. If you do it with a c, it doesn't really matter, right? So c is negative 2. That's where it's going to happen. Plug negative 2 into the derivative. It gives you the same slope as the slope of the secant line. All right, next up. So first we have to check to see if this is continuous and differentiable. So right away, uh, there are warning signs going off because 6 over x, that is going to be like something related to the parent function 1 over x. That has a vertical asymptote at 0. If I plug 0 in here, it's undefined. So right away, I know it's not continuous. Not continuous means that it's not differentiable, so mean value theorem doesn't apply. And it's actually interesting. If you try this this problem, you end up, I think, taking the square root of a negative number in the solution. But um, in this case, it doesn't matter because it's not continuous. We have a vertical asymptote at 0. Cool. All right, let's try the next one. So here we have x to the 2 thirds minus x to the 1 thirds on 0, 1. So uh, there's no issue with plugging in any value in here. It's continuous. Let's see if it's uh, differentiable. So h prime of x is going to be 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. <coughs> and then minus uh, 1 third x to the negative 2 thirds. So um, if we try plugging in the values into the derivative, it looks like we have a problem at 0. Because if we rewrite this as 2 over 3 times the cube root of x, and then minus 1 over 3 times the cube root of x squared, right? because the negative slip limits to the bottom, um, then it looks like we might have an issue with 0. But remember, it only has to be differentiable on open 0, 1. And I can plug in anything I want between 0 and 1, as long as I don't use 0 itself, um, into, this, uh, into this derivative. So I'm going to be OK. So let's see if we can find our secant line first. So we need uh, to plug in 1 and 0. So it's going to be h of 1, which is uh, 1 minus 1, which is 0, minus f of 0, which is also 0, divided by 1 minus 0. That's 0 over 1, which is 0. So it looks like I'm looking for a horizontal tangent. So maybe I have something like, um, like this. I don't know. But those two values are the same, so I'm looking for a horizontal tangent line. So what I'm going to do is let's set the derivative equal to 0. Now we're going to solve for um, x the way I have it set up. Let's change them to c's. Why not? So this is where I was looking for that c value. So this will not be an x squared. It'll be a c squared. So I'm going to add the right side to both sides. So I'll have 2 over 3 cube root of c. Whoops. It's going to be equal to uh, 1 over 3 cube root of c squared. Now, you've got a couple of options here to solve this algebraically. If you started from right here equal to 0, you could kind of divide and then just subtract exponents. I kind of like working with the radicals. I'm now going to multiply by the cube root of c squared on both sides. c squared, not c cubed. So on the right side, it cancels. On the left side, I now have uh, cube root of c squared over the cube root of c. That is the cube root of c squared over c, which is the c squared and the c just cancel out. So it's the cube root of c. So I now have 2 thirds cube root of c equal to 1 third. Multiply both sides by 3 halves. 3's cancel here. 2's cancel. 3's cancel here as well. So I have cube root of c equals 1 half. Cube both sides. c is 1 eighth. Cool. If you graph this on Desmos and then actually graph the tangent line at 1 8th, take a look at what it looks like. I bet that'd be kind of cool. Um, you should have a horizontal tangent when c is equal to 1 8th. All right, let's take a look at the next one. So negative 1 to 1, let's try taking j prime of x. 
2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. And if we uh, try plugging in all the values in here, it looks like we have an issue at 0 here. This is not differentiable. Not differentiable on negative 1, 1 because we have a problem at 0. Okay, so we have a problem at 0. That's not going to be any good. Okay, so mean value theorem doesn't apply. All right, last one. So we got x cubed minus x on negative 1, 2. It's a polynomial, so it's going to be smooth. We know we don't have an issue. So let's find our secant line here. So uh, if we plug 2 in, we have 2 cubed is 8 minus 2 is 6. Minus negative 1 plugged in gives us negative 1 plus 1 is 0 over 2 minus negative 1, which is 3. That gives us a slope of 2 on the secant line. And we're going to set that equal to our derivative at c. So k prime of x, in this case, can be 3x squared minus 1. So what I need is I need 3c squared minus 1 to be equal to 2. So uh, we just have a square here, so we can just add 1 to both sides. 3c squared equals 3. Divide by 3, c squared is 1. So c could be plus or minus 1. Now the trick here, though, is that it has to be somewhere on the interior, right? It could be an endpoint as well, but I'm only looking for the positive 1 here because I want it to be on the interior of that interval. So c equals positive 1. Cool. Hopefully this was helpful. Um, give the rest of the homework a shot. Love you guys. That's why I'm here. Have a great day.